Is that my birthday one? Not yet. Okay, first up. Okay, we've got a bunch of updated products. This is the ESP32 S2 Feather with a BME280 uh, barometric pressure and humidity sensor on it. It previously had an LC709203 battery monitor chip. That chip has been discontinued, and so we've revised it. It now has the MAX17048, but luckily we've got great drivers for the MAX17048 in both Arduino and CircuitPython. So it's going to be a pretty seamless transition. I think this might be one of the last boards that had the LC709. We've converted all of them over the Max 17, uh, but people have been pretty happy with it so far. So good little revision. We've also revised these chunky 1.2 inch high letter seven segment displays. Um, they have a 16K33 LED driver as a backpack. So we did a, we did another little revision that, because, you know, sometimes we put STEMIQT connections on it and we're like, we don't really go through a revision note. Um, but with these, one thing I did is they now have a little boost converter on the back because these um, LEDs, the segments have two LEDs in a row. So you can't really use less than five volts. If you don't use five volts, you're not going to get the LED to light up very nicely. And so it gets nice and bright yellow, nice and bright red. Uh, and so now these have a little booster on the back so you can use them with three or five volts and they will boost the LED driver to five volts, but give you three volt logic level shifted on the I squared C pins. So basically it's just safe to use with whatever and uh, the LEDs will look good no matter what. Next up. This is coming soon, but I wanted to let people sign up because some folks were asking for um, the URL and it's product 5778. This is the Matrix Portal S3. So the Matrix Portal um, is a popular board we made that has a 7051 and it uses an ESP32 as a coprocessor. But the 7051 has been nearly impossible to get. And um, so I was like, you know what? It's time to revise this board. Um, instead of having a 7051, the whole thing is now driven by the ESP32 S3, uh, which has a peripheral that makes it really easy to drive parallel displays like RGB matrices. So we're going to see how big of a matrix display we can drive with these. But one thing it has is a ton more RAM. It's got two megabytes of PS RAM and eight megabytes of flash. So that's much more than the original matrix portal. Um, and of course, it has native Wi-Fi. It also has BLE. Otherwise, it's the same physical size, has the same GPIO at the bottom, has the same pinout for um, the LED matrix. Uh, one improvement I made is, uh, if you go to the next image, we now have, oh, sorry, the next one. We now have it so you can plug in onto the back of the matrix on the bottom, like it sockets right in, or all the matrices come with a cable. You can plug the cable into the top. So it has some mounting holes. It's got, it's got a little bit more flexibility but it should be completely code compatible in CircuitPython and Arduino. Maker Melissa went through all of our guides that use the Matrix Portal and made sure that they all worked on the Matrix Portal S3. Only one guide needed a little bit of hardware uh, to make it work. Otherwise, all of them worked wonderfully. Um, so I think it's going to be a nice little upgrade. So sign up when it gets back in stock. Right, Next up. Back in, sorry, in stock for the first time. Uh, last week, we kind of showed this as a coming soon. Uh, this week, it's actually in stock. It's the ESP32 S3 Cutie Pie. Uh, this version has PS RAM, two megabytes of PS RAM, four megabytes of flash, and yet it's so small. Um, it's like the tiniest little board, but it's got this powerful S3 chip. It's a dual core uh, 10 silica board. It's from Espressive, so you know it's got that Wi-Fi action really well. It's got Arduino and CircuitPython support. It's um, becoming a very stable chip. You know, it usually takes about a year for a chip from Espressive to become um, stable and well supported by the IDF, Arduino and CircuitPython. And I'm feeling like we're getting there. Um, you know, it's got uh, two buttons, reset and boot, so you can get into the ROM bootloader, STEMIQT QT port, um, and uh, built-in antenna. We'll probably make a version also with a UFL. Uh, for people who want external antenna but um the previous version we had did not have ps ram so probably folks are like i need more memory this version has a lot more ram memory okay as a start of the show besides you lady ada our community of open source hardware enthusiasts people who are showing and sharing things all the time our team everybody who's making this thing go is my angelo the audio BFF. So this is a add-on board for STEMIQT boards. We just showed off 
the ESP32 SDQT board. And those QT boards are very minimal. We don't add a lot of extra hardware on them because we figured, hey, you can just like plug in little boards on the back. Uh, these are VFFs. And we made one that has a micro SD card. And we also made one with an I2S amp. And, you know, I needed for a project something that had both a micro SD card and I2S amps so we could play audio clips, long ones, ones that were too long to store on the internal flash memory of the S3 chip uh, or the S2 chip. And so this is what I created. Um, it's got a Pico Blade connector for the speaker. It's got a three watt I2S amplifier. It's uh, by default, it's nine uh, dB gain and uh, stereo mix output. And then there's a little Molex micro SD socket. You can plug in up to 64 gigabyte cards and then use Arduino or CircuitPython code. We've got plenty of both to read audio files or any, whatever, it doesn't have to be audio files, although that would make sense because then you'd play them through the iToys amplifier and you get really good quality audio, uh, much better than using a DAC. You're going to get, you know, your full 16 bit um, audio. And then if you really want to, you know, you can, of course, stack another one. I have two speakers. So um, maybe I'll show a quick yeah. demo. Oh, it it's the overhead and I'll switch to it. Hold on, I got to get my. Hold on, where's my micro? I have to get my USB C right. cable. Okay, so go to the overhead. So this is, yeah, hold on. It was out of focus, but now it's in focus. This is a prototype, so that's why it's got a little bit of a of a wire here. But uh, it's otherwise the same same idea. I just didn't. Uh, we just put these in the store like literally an hour before the show. Um, so you've got your. Uh, Stemma QT, uh, sorry, that your QT Pi board, like this ESP32 S3, um, or you've got the, uh, this is RP2040, and then you're like, okay, but I want to have, you know, uh, micro SD and speaker, you can um, solder headers onto this, and then what you can actually do is also solder this board directly, but in this case, I put socket headers on it, so um, I can remove it for live demoing. So plug it back in and then let me reset it. Okay, good. It's running circuit Python. And then um, it's the code I have on here right now reads wave files from the SD card. And hopefully when I press the button, we'll play them out the speaker. So let's try it. So there's I have noise cancellation going on, so it may or may not play exactly right. <laughs> This is Taylor Swift. Imagine Heap. Yeah. And uh, okay. works for it quite nicely. So you get really nice quality audio. And I prototyped this originally for the Toy Hacker board um, because I wanted to um, have something that could play long audio clips, like up to two or three minutes. Um, and it works very nicely. Circuit Python is what we recommend because we've got the best uh, I2S wave playback support there. But you can also use. Um, Arduino or ESP IDF if you like or whatever. And that's the